Hey everybody, it's Megan from Two Feet First, and in today's video, I'm talking about a tabletop that I built. So if you're interested in seeing this project today, keep watching. This is actually my first table that I have ever built. And because it's my first time, this isn't a how-to tutorial. I wanted to show you the process of how I made this table, plus share my mistakes and what I would do differently next time. With this build, I decided that I wanted to try something new and use new methods of building to create a table. In the past, I would have used pocket holes to assemble the table, but this time I used many different joints to secure the wood together. The wood I used for the tabletop was some pine floor joists that came from a really old house that was being torn down. This house was sentimental to me, so I wanted to reuse the, this wood in something that I would see and use every day. When I build a tabletop again, I will not use pine because it's a soft wood. I would recommend using harder wood because you will not easily get dents in the wood after finished. These boards were very beat up, so we used a planer to give us a smooth finish. But here is mistake number one. We didn't mill the boards to give us a flat board. We thought we did, but the tutorial I found wasn't correct. The quickest way to flatten a board is with a jointer, but most people don't have the money or space to purchase one of these. But don't let that stop you because you can use other methods with a planer to give you a flat board. I have provided two videos in the description below that show you how to correctly mill a board using a planer. One is by 3x3 Custom and the other is by Third Coast Craftsman. And if you're wondering how I did it, it was by running the boards through the planer on one side, flipping it over to the other side and running that side through. We continued this process until the board was the size we wanted. This process didn't give us a flat board because they still had a slight bow to them. To square the edges of the board, again, you can use a jointer, but you can also use a table saw with a type of jig or sled to give you a square edge. I didn't use one, which was another mistake. There are two videos that I would recommend for this. The first one is the three by three custom video about milling, and the second is by Walker's Woodworks on creating a jointer sled. After squaring the edges, it was time to attach the boards together to form the tabletop. I decided to use a biscuit jointer to do this. I started by laying the boards out on the, in the order that we wanted them. Something I did not know about when I created my tabletop was the grain arch on the ends of the boards. You want the grain arch to alternate and the Woodworker Journal video linked below has a great tutorial explaining this. We then marked the boards for where the biscuit would be placed and Eternal Harvest has a fantastic tutorial on how she glues up her tabletops and I will link to that video in the description below as well. I did have an issue while I was using my biscuit joiner. For some reason, instead of the biscuit being a 90 degree to the board, it somehow got changed to 45 degrees, which doesn't work well if you are putting two boards together. So make sure you check that the biscuit is being created at a 90 degree angle to save you some headaches later. Once all the boards had a biscuit joint added, it was time to glue up the boards and clamp them all together, then leave them to dry. Something that my husband wanted was a breadboard end on the table, which I agreed with because I think it looks nice, plus it helps strengthen the tabletop. I used my router and table saw to create a tongue and groove joint. I routered the ends of the tabletop to allow the breadboard to be placed at the end of the table. This was a learning curve, by, but by the end, I did figure out the best method for me. So I would recommend practicing on a scrap board first because some of my ends were very rough. I then used dowels to hold the ends into place after gluing. Once everything was dry, I cut away the dowels with a flush trim saw, then sanded the tabletop. I decided that I wanted to fill in all the gaps and knots with epoxy to make sure the top was smooth and easy to clean. 
I mix the epoxy according to the instructions because it's important to mix the ratios correctly, but also mix slowly to help the amount of bubbles in the mix. I decided to start on the back side of the table and I'm glad I did. After finishing that side, I realized that the epoxy will bleed into the wood because I am using soft wood which made the wood discolored when I applied my finish. So to solve my problem on the front side of the table, I applied a coat of my finish, which is General Finish Armor Seal, because it can be wiped on to seal the pores of the soft wood. I taped around the areas that, would be, that I would be applying epoxy with painter's tape. Then I applied the epoxy to those taped areas. To give it a clean finish, I used a heat gun to remove the bubbles. Once everything was dry, I removed the tape by lightly heating the area with the heat gun. After, I used a card scraper to scrape the epoxy to be flush with the tabletop. But I also found that my orbital sander did a great job at making everything level as well. I then wiped the top with a dry cloth to remove the dust and I applied the recommended coats of finish onto the top. install this apron I just use Craig Jigs the Craig Jig pocket to install the aprons as you can see and then I use this little hooky thing for a tabletop and it worked out fantastic I would recommend those but the aprons I want to do it a little different the next time I do it I want to cut out a notch in the actual leg and then inset the apron into the leg that way i wouldn't need the screws right here then this whole tabletop would basically be something without screws and here's what my tabletop looks like in my new dining room Thanks for joining me for today's project. Be sure to click the thumbs up button if you like this video. And if you want to check out some more projects before you leave, there is a playlist queued up to the side that I think you'll love. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you as part of my community. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell to get notified of my future videos. And I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.